Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe, and then hit the little bell icon right at the subscribe button, and it'll notify you of any new Welcome videos when I release well. for you. Got an AC down. Yeah, it's kind of hot and humid day. Pretty cool day. I mean, not cool, but it's... Uh, Just, you know, cool looking, <laughs> but it's hot. Anyway, it's this unit here. I'm gonna check it out. Uh, I haven't gone inside yet. Just gonna see what we got going on. Today I'm going to be showing you the multimeter I use, which is pretty cool, but also showing you another test you can do that, that shows uh, if your capacitors are good, and I'm testing the test, uh, so to speak, verifying whether the formula actually works, and, and it does, but I'm going to show it to you in this video a little bit more thoroughly. Here I'm just using the non-contact voltage detector and verifying that voltage is present. The breaker's not tripped or anything inside. This one voltage was present. Alright. Got power there. See our disconnect. No power. Power. Oh, hold on, Set it to ohms instead. That's the upside down horseshoe looking symbol. Power both. Power both. Measures continuity, shows so if there's a, a continuous the path. These fuses were good. Ohms is also used to measure resistance in a circuit. screwdriver here. Out kind of the second day. Okay, like it so far. Ohm's tests are always taken on a de energized system, capacitor discharged. No power for Ohm's tests, it could ruin a meter. So never use the ohm test on a live circuit. Can't tell right off if the contactor sucked in. But before we do anything, I'm going to discharge the capacitor. Capacitors hold a charge even after the power is disconnected. So safety first. Disconnect the power or turn off the and breakers and then discharge the capacitors. Let's take a look here. I can just do a continuity test on the contactor. Our contactor is pulled on or not pulled in. On the bottom of the top, oh yeah, so the unit's turned on inside. So we've got continuity there. So it's bridging, bridging the leads. So looking for any burned wiring. I don't see any burned wiring off the end. Definitely see the Whoa, compressor is way hot. <laughs> it's blazing hot. So, I'm guessing our fan motor quit. At this point, I'm going to put some cold water on the compressor. You'll probably even see it steam because it's, it's just that hot. Heard a little bit of a sizzle. Might need to get some ice on it. I would bet at the least that our fan motor our fan capacitor is bad. So I got new capacitors. If that's, uh, I'll measure these. Test it out. Just going through the kind of standard procedure here. Start with the fan capacitor. It's way hot. Microfarads on that. I'm almost sure that that was bad. Two 
0.254, definitely bad. So there's that. This is my Titan, Titan Pro. These, a lot of times I'm finding are uh, real close to the limit of, of, you know, what the capacitor should be at. 4.88, that's good. 4.75 is as low as you want to go. The end phase. There's our new capacitor. 5.25 is as high as we And go. we'll test the 0.25 variance. Compressor as Plus well. Plus or minus 5%. Five. So the hard start jet here is kind of hanging off. We'll set that there. <coughs> It's a 35 capacitor. That's a bit high. 39. Most of mine are 35s, but it's pretty hot. Let's see, it is a It seems a little bulge though. I'm going to change it because it's a little higher than it should be. It's not real bad, but 1.25 would be 36.5. It would be good, but this one's actually too high. Capacitor is too high. So it's out of phase, just gone in a different direction, that's all. And Got our new Titan Pro here. I'm trying these out, seeing how these go. These are good. Reading wise, I've got 34.22. So it can be a difference of 1.25. So we're within range there. Better. So I usually test my capacitors uh, using this method. You know, everything disconnected, everything dispowered. It's a bit safer, but Today I wanted to go into testing a different method, the capacitor under load. Now, the capacitor is rated plus or minus 5%. Um, you know, and I believe that's when it's not under load. Under load might be a little bit different, but I wanted to test the okay, formula. The yellow start wire. For testing the capacitor under load. By itself. And then our commons. Go to the other side. I've been hearing about it for some time, and uh, so I wanted to get into it today to test the formula, which is 2650 times the full load amps, which is the running and if amps. We're using a hard start kit, which I like to use a hard start kit. Divided so by the voltage. Side so that's Compressor is so hot. I may need to put some ice on this one. It's just too hot. I can try. I don't know though. It 
So my reading was 34.22. Been wanting to, to test uh, this test for a way of telling capacitance what your capacitance is, is testing the amps, amp draw on the yellow start wire, Going to. the compressor, multiplying by 2650 and then divide by the voltage. I have not proven that yet and so that's what I set out to do today to prove whether this formula works. So, so but I'll plug in my fingers and then figure that out. Let me take a look here. And I may need to go get ice and this will give me a chance to better figure this out. Sometimes I get a little spoiled by having the tools. This is my favorite multimeter that reads capacitance, but you have to disconnect everything to test the capacitance. So there is a test that you can do. 2650 times the, uh, the amps divide by line voltage and that should equal the run cap size. So I want to test that and compare that to, to what we've got. But we need to cool down the compressor first. So. Right. And again, I may need to go get some ice. This would be a good unit to test it on. And I can write it down and I've got a calculator on my phone. So it should work out good. So I'll just repeat this formula throughout the video a few more times. That way by the end of it you'll have it memorized. But it's 2650 times the full load amps, that's the running amps, divided by the voltage. Got my laser thermometer here. Let's see how hot the uh, compressor is. 115 degrees, 113 degrees. All right. Okay, so it's still really, really hot. I'm probably gonna need ice on this one, but trying. Saw something back here. This an old bottle probably would use for water and ice. Okay, pack that out with me. Uh, I'm gonna plug it in and see what happens. If the compressor doesn't start up right away, we'll turn it off. See if our fan motor starts and uh, let's see. I think the fan motor started up, so that's good. But the compressor didn't start. So it made me a little nervous. Pretty sure I'm going to need ice on this one. Twenty-six fifty times full load amps divided by voltage equals capacitance. By the end of this video, I'm going to have it memorized too. Got just the fan motor. That's running good. Okay, so I'll go get some ice and then check this out. To be continued. Okay, a hat full of ice and a beverage. Soda. All right. Let's take a look here. Ice set on this. Get my hat back. It's a good idea to discharge the capacitor again. Now that I can hold the disconnect. Discharge with the, something a little heftier, but just bridging the metal leads. It'll do the trick, holding the insulate and the handle. So. 
that makes me nervous. I set my screwdriver down somewhere. I'm gonna have to find it. Maybe when I went on the ice mission, I might have set it on the counter. It's easier if you set it in the back, but that limits the surface area as well. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't take too much. I just need a couple, a little bit of ice to take off the heat of the compressor. A few on the bottom, some on the top. It does the job a lot faster than water. Oh, there's my screwdriver. Yeah. Rolled under there. Okay, get my hat back. It's my shield. Take the ice and pull the heat right out of this thing. It's kind of interesting to see at what temperature will does it reset. So far, I've seen them around 113. Done a little researching around, but haven't really found anything about at what temperature does the thermostat trip out, and at what temperature does it reset. That would be interesting, useful to know. Haven't found the answer yet. If any of you know, if you leave a comment below, that'd be cool. If anybody knows the answer to that. What temperature does the cool thermal switch shut off or turn back on and reset? Imagine different compressors. Always it's learning different. more. Every day, learning more. But it'd be Hopefully cool to know that the general ideas, the general you. cutouts and cut-ins of the thermal what switch. What I learned and uh, the experience. Which experience is a brutal teacher, but it does learn as well. <laughs> but sometimes learn things the hard way. Hopefully, learn things a little easier way. Hence my making these videos for you. Hope to spare you some of the hardships and make it easier so you can kind of cut right to the fix. Right to the repair and know what to look for. And know what the experience is showing you. What the signs are and how to interpret them and what will work to restore things faster, better, and make things more efficient. Yep, I have to spare you a pain. Let's see with the laser thermometer what we're reading at now. Probably not the most accurate test, but it is interesting. 103. 100. Well, we should start, at least I think so. Down at the bottom, 117 right around the power 122 I don't know maybe maybe we need more ice on it each compressor is different also what would be helpful and uh, Ulysses if you're uh, watching this you'd probably be the one to to tell us, you know, where on each unit, on each compressor, is the, the thermal switch. Because that would be helpful for, you know, understanding the best place to put the ice if we can cool down the thermal switch. If we know, like on this one, it was most like the fan motor quit because our capacitor was so bad. Uh, 
we just need to get the unit running again and then the, the refrigerant will cool the compressor down. Um, so if we knew where exactly where that thermal switch is, we could better focus where we put the ice, you know, it just would be useful. So that's the uh, information I'm looking for. So this is uh, Palacios. I think you'd be the guy to pass on that knowledge on all the different compressors, you know, you give that. That's what I'd like to see anyway. <laughs> Enjoy your videos. All right, I think we're ready to try it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and see if we start up and go from there. If not, I'll pull it again. The compressor will just sit there trying to start if it's already overheated, so we don't want that. We wanna pull it if it doesn't start. Here goes. Time. I may need more ice. The ice is melting and blue. Yep, twenty six fifty times running amps divided by the voltage equals the capacitance. One other trick I've done with these sometimes is give it a little tap. Yeah, I got a rag here. Give it a little block and then give it a little tap. Excuse me, the Diet Coke got me. Nice, humid, overcast day. All right, we'll see. Yeah, this one's still really hot. I may have to go get more ice. I was feeling at the back of this where it's extremely hot. It just depends how long it's on. Show you with the thermometer again. Down here at the bottom, it's 118 degrees, 120 degrees. Up at the top, 104. Down at the bottom, at the back, it's 116. So it's still pretty hot. A little bit of breeze going here, and that's helpful. A good day for this, you know. I think something's gonna happen better than the blazing, blazing sun that we've had. Yeah, compressor's still too hot. I'm going to try it again, but then I'm going to go get some ice if it doesn't start right up. So, let's plug it in and see what happens. Did not start. Oh, I'm going to go get some more ice. Ice mission. Nice day. Go get some more ice. Okay, got some more ice. Got some more water. Not exactly that cold, but.
others. Here's the way it is. Once again, 2650 times full load amps divided by voltage equals capacitance. One of those times, but don't have it happen today that. Get in and find out. Again, I'll pull it if it doesn't start right away. Let's see. Here it goes. Yep, it didn't start. So I'm gonna have to wait a bit longer. I need to re-discharge the capacitor again. Turn a good day in a, into a bad day real fast. Should probably double check and verify my wiring connections as well on the compressor. I didn't check them, I kind of assumed it was okay, which is not always the case either. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah, everything looks okay. Compressor is still really hot.
six degrees. Four o'clock on Tuesday. Again, 2650 times full load amps divided by voltage equals capacitance. In the full load amps, you take the amp draw reading on the yellow start wire for the capacitor, from the capacitor to the compressor. And for the fan motor, for that one, you take the amp reading from either side of the capacitor. 2650 times that reading, that's the full load amps with the unit running, divided by the voltage, the voltage you get by reading perm to common with the voltmeter. That's with your multimeter set to volts AC. One lead to each side on a single capacitor, and if it's a dual cap, it's one lead on the common, the other two or the other to fan, or whichever, if you're reading for the fan uh, capacitance, or you know, if you're reading for the capacitor, the compressor, capacitor, capacitance, <laughs> perm to common, or common to fan. Yeah, I'm going to show that here pretty soon. This one was a stubborn one, but it gives me a chance to really uh, lock in this formula. See how fast it is. Nice. Absorbing the heat from the compressor. And again, the formula is 2650 times full load amps divided by voltage equals capacitance. That's 2650 times the running amps divided by voltage equals capacitance.
way you're really going to get this formula is by testing it yourself and trying this. Uh, the water evaporates when you give up. You know, safety first always is a, a very, this is a dangerous test for sure. Uh, again, 2650 times full load amps divided by voltage equals capacitance. That shows you the capacitance under load. Uh, but if you plug the formula into your phone or write it down somewhere, 2650 times full load amps divided by voltage equals capacitance. You probably won't even need to write it down by the end of this video. Have it memorized. how cold the compressor had. Oh, this is the other unit. See how much it's sweating there. That's how humid it is. Sorry for the vibration noise. Next time I'll know, don't set the camera on the right. suction line. I'll borrow some of that coldness on of this unit. <laughs> I have another unit that's running. Yeah, it's still hot. There's a lot of heat in there. suction line we're dropping pretty quickly on the suction line 60 degrees and you can see that's gonna act to cool it down it's nice and cool and a fan motor for moving heat okay that's great now what I want to do is we're dropping. Take our readings for voltage and our amp draw reading. And then I can get off this roof and come back to it. The sun's kind of coming out. So our capacitor was at 34.22, I believe. calculation to that reading to see. Okay, so here's the amp reading on the 
start wire. It did fluctuate a little bit, but five was the average. Divided by 365 equals 36.3 is our capacitor size side and plus or minus 5% on 35 that'd be, that'd be just in the in the mix. The test without load was 34.2 and you can have a 1.25 difference. So as long as we were 36.25, you know, my math isn't perfect here. We're, we're close enough, as just to say. Okay. We're looking at this as I made the video. I took the 2650 times 5 and then divided it by what is the rated voltage, which is 370. And I got now on the capacitor, capacitor 35.81. microfarad.
calculator. And clear, we're gonna go 0 0.62 times 2650 divided by, that one was 350 volts, equals 4.69. So 4.75 would be good, um, but you know, my, my calculations weren't perfect. I kind of rounded off to the nearest number. We are close enough, suffice it to say. But pretty interesting, I can, you know, as long as you get in the ballpark, uh, it does work, the formula. The formula works. One other thing I need to look into a little further on this is how the hard start uh, kit affects I saw that things. formula first on the Steven Rardon video, the 2650 times uh, amp draw. So shout out to Steven for that tip. Thank you. Very cool. Cool stuff. Good videos. I yeah, appreciate you sharing the knowledge on YouTube. This is very, very cool. I have heard and read about the formula a few times before. But I just kind of wanted to compare this out a little bit. Uh, compare it to, you know, the readings we're getting. Just thought it's a little interesting. You know, I didn't do it perfectly. I just did it, you know, well enough. Anyway, you can see my line's nice and cold. Fan motor spin in the correct direction. Compressor's back up and running. Under load, we're running good on the amp draw. Um, I had heard the 2650 deal elsewhere also, but I, but that was the first video I kind of saw it put into action on the Stephen Arden video. So learn a lot from the guys in the YouTube HVAC community, and uh, definitely appreciate all you guys share on YouTube and in the community, friends. So shout out to the air conditioning guy. Caesar Alejandro Kinzel. Shout out. Uh, Comfort Plus Heating and Cooling. Box Heating and Cooling. TNN Services, LLC. Yeah, appreciate all you guys. Justin Henning. John HVAC. Very cool, very cool. And uh, BK HVAC. Rob HVAC. HVAC and NC. South Carolina. Yep. Great furnace man. And many well, more. We'll see you on the next one. You guys, thanks for watching. And shout out to some voices I haven't heard in a long time. Jim Pettinato. And then HBAC. Put some fire tank on it. Dark is our club. The HVAC guys. It's a humid day. Eddie. All right. Hall. Put my cover back on. Can't train it. We're all set. It's time to clear these Brits, roofs off and HBAC. get this. Debris off. All these channels Pretty benefit soon, quite soon a bit. So if you get a chance, check get out their YouTube channels. The heat of the summer. You'll, you'll learn a lot. Keep up the great work, fellas. Right. Good stuff. Definitely had some crazy stuff happen in the past few weeks, and I'm going to be trying to share some of those videos with you, starting with the one I shared the other day, which was about how my best tips on unclogging air conditioner condensate lines and the preventative maintenance you can do to prevent things. But in that video, I shared my five plus best tips about con you know dealing with condensate drain clogs with from air conditioning and heading those things off. Hope you like this video, I'm trying to share some of my best tips. Now these are steps that you can take to head things off. You know, preventative maintenance always puts the maintenance on your schedule and, and uh, by clearing these lines ahead of time, right ahead of the, the cooling season, uh, can help prevent a lot of these things from happening. Obviously you can't prevent everything, but if you head off the majority of it, it's gonna save you a lot of time and effort later on and a lot of energy later on. That way you're not getting called off of everything else. You know, if you can do it ahead of time, preventative maintenance puts things on your schedule. Anyway, that's what Kung Fu Maintenance is all about, making go. life easier for you and sparing you as many headaches as I possibly can. Thanks for watching, and I hope you subscribe. I hope you like the video. These past few days have been some crazy days. Hey, and I hope to be bringing you more videos uh, that happen these days. I had a compressor burnout. So and then I had a unit that needed the disconnect kind of changed out. So hopefully going to be showing you those videos and a little bit more how-to. Or a lot more how-to. And just sharing the experiences with you in the days to come. Thanks for watching. Tried everything.
below. You'll find links to the tools and s some of the parts and tools and, and items used in the videos to help keep things running good and maintain things how they should be. It looks like it's internal.